The sea is an enormous place, and it is home to the most prodigious fish ever created. Bluefin tuna, also known as giant tuna. It's not just any animal, it's a fish like no other. Its natural history is unique, and its biology eludes every zoological prediction. The bluefin tuna is a traveler that is historically known to have reached 900 kilograms in weight. Its body design comes standard with everything necessary to swim tirelessly at speeds and over distances no other fish can equal. They're always together, sometimes in groups or in schools that number in the thousands. As they travel the seas, they feed on smaller fish, such as mackerel, sardines, and anchovies, among many others. They need lots of energy to move their compact bodies like torpedoes. Their powerful muscles seem to be steel-plated. And their hydrodynamic shape is ideal for swimming an average of 200 kilometers a day reaching depths of up to 1,000 meters in the warm waters they inhabit. Giant tuna live in the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, but it is the tuna that live in the latter that arouse our interest, because they are the ones that visit us. Along their voyage throughout the planet, they undergo incredible migrations, both to find food and to reproduce. Scientists have found that they can travel up to 11,000 kilometers in only 60 days. The distance between Barcelona and Tokyo. From the middle of the Atlantic, they divide into two groups heading for two locations that are magical for them, two small seas in which they were born. One group goes to the Gulf of Mexico and the other comes to the Mediterranean Sea. To enter the Mediterranean, they have to first go through its door, the Strait of Gibraltar. That mountain is Africa, and this side is Europe. Only 14 kilometers separate them, and all of the bluefin tuna enter the Mediterranean from the Atlantic through this channel each year. They remember the place they were born in many years ago, and they return with a mission. In these coasts, we human beings have been waiting for them for thousands of years, because bluefin tuna fishing has been the reason entire cities and cultures have flourished here. Their delicious meat has fed all of the peoples that have settled along the shores of the Mediterranean Sea for the last 6,000 years. The human mind has devised numerous fishing techniques to catch these sea giants, but they too are intelligent and strong. This is an ancestral challenge bringing two species together that seem destined to confront each other. Since ancient times, art has shown the great importance of tuna to the daily lives of the peoples who have lived here. Entire cities were even built here, dedicated to fishing and the commerce of bluefin tuna. Such as this Roman one on the coast of Spain, known as Baelo Claudia. Its stones show us the way in which the tuna's meat was stored in order to sell it to the entire empire. Even coins were minted with the image of tuna alongside emperors and gods. From here, conserved in oil or salt, the meat of the tuna was stored in clay amphoras and then distributed to feed empires. But first, they have to be fished, and the sea is very big. When the bluefin tuna enter the Mediterranean, they barely eat anything. 
That's why man has had to devise different strategies such as the almadraba. It consists of a labyrinth of nets fixed to the seabed that await tuna to enter it. These fishermen from the Spanish coast believe they have a bunch of giant tuna down there. Now they must guide them to the last stretch of the trap to try to get them out. This almadraba technology, similar to the one that exists today, substituted previous techniques at the end of the Middle Ages. It was normally used in places with an abundance of salt to conserve tuna meat. This is how the technique was employed throughout the Mediterranean, from the coasts of the Strait of Gibraltar to the Black Sea. Fortunately for them, most bluefin tuna can continue their voyage. Already in the Mediterranean, another type of fisherman awaits them. They are the so-called sports fishermen, amateurs and passionate fishermen who sail in their boats in search of these giants. They are many in various ports, and their activity has been seriously controlled to avoid possible abuses. Stern restrictions have been established, and it is forbidden to take the tuna. They must be returned to the sea. Often, sports fishermen end up focusing on other species related to the bluefin tuna because of how difficult it is to fish them. There is another type of bluefin tuna fishing, and although it isn't used in the Mediterranean, it's still quite spectacular. On the coasts of northern Spain, a few Cantabrian and Basque boats set sail, carrying pools of small live fish on board. They use fishing rods because outside of the reproductive season, bluefin tuna feed voraciously. This allows the men of the north to fish them using live bait. They spray the surface of the sea with hoses to deceive the tuna who believe there is food when they see the foam from below. Then they toss the live fish they carried as bait to complete the deception. And it works. Between the months of April and June, again in the Mediterranean Sea, Another fishing technique is carried out on reproducing tuna before and during spawning. It's long line fishing, a line measuring many kilometers from which thousands of baited hooks hang at regular intervals at depths of 100 to 150 meters. Long line fleets have always operated throughout the Mare Nostrum. Reproductive adults who have managed to arrive to their final destination begin to show changes in their behavior. With the moon shining down on them, something in the way they move and their color tells us that they've finally arrived to the place where they were born, some after 30 years. They begin to turn and to swim haphazardly, feeling the call to reproduce inside them. They're in the waters of the Balearic Islands, But like many fish, they lack the organs to copulate, which is why they carry out the so-called external fertilization. In other words, male and female shoot eggs and sperms into the sea that unite outside their bodies, thus forming fertilized eggs from which larvae will be born. 
A 200 kilogram female spreads around 157 million eggs into the sea each year. The Balearic Sea is one of the most important areas for the reproduction of Atlantic bluefin tuna in the Mediterranean. It is also where another traditional fishing technique known as seine fishing is carried out. However, the sea is still big, very big, and finding schools of tuna is not easy at all. The seine fishing technique is carried out in Spain by only six boats, all of them coming from the Tarragonian town of La Metia de Mar. We are in the midst of tuna season. The fishermen have only one month to catch everything they'll fish for the entire year, but they haven't found any appropriately sized tuna yet. But these captains have generations of experience in their genes, and they know where to look. Intuition, tradition, maritime know-how. He orders the crew to get prepared. Seine boats require many specialized fishermen who know exactly what they must do with just one glance from the captain. They place the boat above the group of bluefin tuna, which they call mola. Everything is ready, but they must be quick. They're facing megafish, the king of the sea. A dinghy motors away from the ship, tethered by a net measuring 1,800 meters long and 130 meters deep. The boat quickly traces an enormous circle over the tuna mola, trying to surround them with the net before they realize this and escape. It's a matter of minutes. This enveloping maneuver must be carried out perfectly. The two boats meet on the other side of the perimeter to close it. This is the most delicate moment. Down there, the intelligent bluefin tuna have figured out something strange is going on, and they can still escape through the crevice that is about to be closed. Done. The giants keep turning in search of an exit that does not exist. On the bridge, the captain is satisfied but there's still a lot of work to be done. The whole net must be drawn in, and in a way that causes absolutely no harm to the tuna that are swimming somewhat dazed inside it. Without hurting them? But aren't they fishermen? Yes, but the modern seine technique no longer extracts the fish from the sea after capture. They're left alive and swimming. We'll soon see why. Seeing them work, it seems incredible that they're able to bring in all those nets and buoys into the boat again, but they do it in perfect coordination. Down there, some 200 bluefin tuna, adults that have already reproduced, seem to be getting used to this new situation. They feel comfortable within the group. It eases them. Right then, another boat appears on the horizon, towing what seems to be an enormous floating basketball hoop. This is the transport pool. True cowboys of the sea bring in the transport pool very close until they can join it to the ring that's holding in the tuna. And now they do something incredible that can only be appreciated from underwater. They open up a colossal underwater door that connects the two netted enclosures. Communicating like dolphins through whistles, they weave a sort of spider web by opening and closing walls of net with the intention of directing the mola of tuna from the initial enclosure to the transport pool. They did it. When the first one crosses the threshold, the others follow. This transfer of tuna is carefully recorded on video so that they can later be counted one by one from the videotape. 
thus certifying as precisely as possible exactly how many animals have been caught. Minutes later, the recording is watched directly on the bridge. Each specimen is accounted for in the presence of representatives from official fishing control organizations in charge of certifying the absolute transparency of the operation. The documents certifying the catch are signed by the inspectors and observers, guaranteeing that all regulations safeguarding the conservation of the bluefin tuna are met to the letter at all times. These papers and the videotape will accompany the tuna from their transport pool on their voyage from the Balearic Sea to La Metia de Mar, such that any further inspectors during this voyage can contrast the data with the true contents of the pool. With all this paperwork in order, the pool that contains the live tuna is slowly dragged by the tugboat at a speed of only one knot and it will take many days to take them to their new home in the sunny coast of La Metia de Mar, where they'll live, some for many years, growing under the protection of the sea farmers. Most adult tuna, after reproducing, return to the Atlantic Ocean during the month of July, where they'll feed until the next year. The offspring born from the spawning as tiny as plankton, remain in the Mediterranean, feeding themselves until they reach sexual maturity. Then they will begin to carry out their annual reproductive migration for the rest of their lives. <laughs> 